In April 2011, I went to my annual GYN appointment and during my internal exam, um, the doctor said, uh-oh. <laughs> so of course, immediately I began panicking. I'm like, uh-oh, what do you mean, uh-oh? And he was like, oh, well, does this hurt? Pressing down and moving a little bit. And I'm just like, oh yeah, you know, that is uncomfortable. Uh, so he was like, well, you know, it looks like we're going to have to have some more tests done. So I'm just like, what the heck is going on? So this is April 2011, a month before I'm getting married. Um, I get in the car and immediately call my mom. I'm bawling on the phone like, mom, what the heck? <laughs> he thought that I had ovarian cysts uh, and I was going to have to have an ultrasound done. I like I don't know what you're talking about you know I go get my pap smears done every year and nothing is ever wrong so to have this uh oh is like what <laughs> so you know I'm calling my now husband my fiance then and just like trying to explain to him over the phone he's like what are you talking about calm down you know everybody's just like riled up because I don't know what's going on so I end up getting my ultrasound done, which if it wasn't for my sister-in-law <laughs> telling me that it would be internal and external, I would not have been prepared. Um, so I had to go get an ultrasound. Um, and like I said, it was internal and external. And they did find fibroids. So I, you know, I didn't know really too much about fibroids at that point, but you know, I started my Googling and asking family and did find out that we had a family history of fibroids. My mother, my grandmother, aunts on, you know, my dad's side. So it was, a, you know, a very long history of fibroids. <clears throat> so, you know, it was explained to me that pretty much from here on out, that I was going to have to have an ultrasound accompanied by my annual you know, pap smear or annual GYN internal exam. So I mentally prepared myself for that. <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the fibroids weren't giving me really any pain except for when you're poking and prodding at them <laughs> during my annual exam. So I really didn't pay them too much attention. I just was aware that it was something that I was going to have to deal with. So I'm going to fast forward a bit, but every year when I went for my annual exam, the fibroids got progressively bigger. So in 2014, you know, I was getting like really upset with myself. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty skinny. <laughs> and, you know, I eat a lot of junk sometimes, whatever the case may be. But I really wasn't getting bigger, but my stomach was. So no matter what I tried, I was working out, I was not really dieting, but changing my eating habits and not eating so much junk and nothing would really help my stomach. So I'm like, what is going on? You know, I was starting to feel more pain, you know, on my uh, right pelvic area. So I'm just like, there's just like something going on. So I went again for uh, my annual exam. Actually, I think it was a little bit earlier than usual because I was having all these symptoms. And I'm just like, um, there's something going on, you know, can we get an ultrasound? He's like, oh, no, you know, it's probably nothing. You don't need an ultrasound. So I, I press him, I press him, I press him. I end up going in for an internal exam, and then he says, you need to go get an ultrasound right now. And I say, <clears throat> well, yeah, you know, I could have told you that. I knew something was going on. I, you know, I know my body. So I go get the ultrasound. It wasn't right away, but probably the next day. And, uh, you know, I'm calling, waiting for the report. Did the report come in? Did the report, did the report come in? And uh, finally, you know, the report comes in. I called the doctor probably five or six times, left messages. So he calls me back. It was around 5 o'clock on a Friday. I remember this very vividly. I was home by myself. And he calls me. He says... Hello, Miss Turnbull. <laughs> uh, you've been trying to reach me. And I said, yes, you know, I just wanted to go over my ultrasound results. And he's like, well, unfortunately, the fibroids have gotten significantly bigger. Um, so at this point, it doesn't seem that you'll be able to conceive. And if you are, you won't be able to carry full term. And I'm sorry, guys, you know, but it's still... Pretty fresh. 
<laughs> so that was, let's say, uh, June or July of 2014. So again, I hang up the phone. <laughs> I'm in shock. I'm waiting for my husband to come home. And I just, he comes in, I just fall apart. <laughs> what do you mean? You know, we're not going to be able to conceive. And, you know, at this point, you know, we're just enjoying each other. We're not really thinking about kids right now. Uh, and that's another thing I forgot to mention. During my exams, I would ask, you know, is do I need to change my timeline? I was in school, I was working. A kid didn't necessarily fit into my timeline at, you know, at that point. And the doctor was always like, no, you know what, you're fine. As long as the symptoms are bearable, you know, the pain is, your discomfort is bearable, you should be fine. So I said, okay. I listened to him, and then next thing you know, he's saying that I can't conceive. So, zero to a hundred, really, really quick. <laughs> so, of course, there were so many things wrong with that, you know, telling people over the phone, information like that really is not good. Not allowing me to have somebody there with me, you know, there were a lot of things that he could have done differently. So needless to say, I'm not going back to him anymore. <laughs> so I immediately started trying to find alternate options. What could I do? What natural remedies were there for fibroids? I tried everything. <laughs> I tried apple cider vinegar, I'm trying to drink that diluted in water, exercise, eating differently, anything that you can name you know I tried it basically um and there really there there were there wasn't any help so I went to a specialist and they did you know an ultrasound they did an exam they took my history they looked over notes and you know sh my my doctor Dr. Mann who is amazing said I don't know what he was talking about you're going to be able to conceive so we're going to lay this plan out, and this is what we're going to do. So, after, you know, my ultrasound, and we figured out how many fibroids there were, and how, roundabout how big they were, um, I had, at that time, they were looking at about three large ones that were six centimeters a piece, essentially. Two on my right side, and then one on my left side. But from the ultrasound, it looked like they were on the outside of my uterus and not the inside, which is pretty amazing. So if there is positive news to be had, that, you know, that was pretty positive. So, uh, so the plan of action was to start this medication called Lupron. So Lupron is a once monthly injection and they inject you right in your butt <laughs> and you're sore for a couple days after so sitting down is kind of a chore but um my experience of the lupron is it basically puts you into menopause so it kills off the circulation to your fibroids and it's supposed to shrink them so it would be awesome if they shrunk all the way to disappearing but unfortunately that didn't really ha that didn't happen in my case so i took the lupron for about four months and it was very very difficult uh, like I said it gives you menopausal symptoms so at 27 I was experiencing hot flashes um, mood swings really down and it was really tough <laughs> so family was like super super supportive they were always there calling my mom non-stop so yeah <laughs> it was like really a struggle and then the ultimate was November 21st of 2014 I had a myomectomy which is a surgery to remove the fibroids <sighs> so it was a three-hour surgery and they removed nine fibroids uh, and the biggest fibroid was about nine centimeters the size of like a small grapefruit 
and it was actually undetected by the ultrasounds that we had. It was kind of a surprise by everyone, hello, I'm here. <laughs> and it was at the top of my uterus and it was actually so, so large that it was starting to combine with my intestines. So during the surgery, they had to separate them and do all that stuff. So the surgery went well. They removed all the fibroids. You know, I went for my post-op exams and everything looked great. So, you know, we have to wait a certain amount of time before we can start trying to conceive, uh, about three months. So in February, of 2015 we basically got like the green light that we can start trying so we are now TT Sears trying to conceive and that is a journey in itself um, it's difficult because every month you're praying and you're hoping but it doesn't always work out that way but you try to stay positive and that you know that's where I'm at right now so any encouragement, you know, is definitely needed. But I thought it was really important to make this video because I know, well, I don't know for sure, but I feel that a lot of people are probably in my position. Maybe they have been, maybe they are currently. Uh, I don't know at what point of my timeline, if they just found out or about their fibroids or if their fibroids are growing, you know, whatever. But I think the biggest thing was family for me and just continuing to have faith. Because if not, I would have, I don't know, but I don't know if I would have made it. <laughs> the surgery took me about eight weeks to recover before I went back to work. I had um, a bikini cut, <laughs> so very much like a C-section. I couldn't do too much of anything for myself. My husband was there helping me get in and out of the shower, helping me sit up, helping me get dressed, helping me put socks on. And I'm very independent, so that was so tough, so tough. But like I said, family was amazing and they were there for me like every step of the way. So I'm hoping that this video helps someone, inspires somebody, or just, Maybe I'm being selfish and it's just to help me put my feelings out there. <laughs> but either way, I hope that this positively impacts somebody, some way. So now I am looking forward to the future, trying to conceive, hopefully soon by my birthday, my birthday is in February, that I will be pregnant and have a healthy pregnancy that will go full term and then I can send that first doctor a card saying <laughs> you you can't beat me you can't keep me down so uh, thanks guys for listening and excuse all the tears and everything but you know I thought that this was really uh, really important so I appreciate it thank you guys